The root of David. He is the bright morning. And the morning star, the prince of peace, the alpha, and the omega. Walking in sunlight. All of my journey. Over the mountain. Over the mountain. Jesus has said I Well the Lord said I'm never going to say Oh Lord that's a promise Divine word It's a promise that never can fail Oh, oh heavenly heavenly Y'all I want to Begin Our sermonic presentation By giving you A title to our series here. We're currently in a series called The Life of Joseph, uh, Principles of God's Providence. Today's title to the series is The Interruption. Somebody say The Interruption. Now, as we read Genesis 38, I want you to know that in our scripture reading, we read Genesis 37, verse 36, and then we read Genesis 39 in verse number one. But we omitted reading the whole chapter of Genesis 38, because I think that Genesis 38 is what we call the interruption. Say the interruption. interruption. And now, let me break it down to you. What's an interruption? It's, have you ever been watching television before, and all of a sudden, uh, there's a noise, a very in, in, uh, irritating noise that comes on the television. And it's like, ah, uh, come on and hear somebody. And it's either an alert to let you know about the weather or a child abduction or something serious has happened. Am I right about it? And sisters, as we talk about the interruption, one thing you don't want to do, sisters, you don't want to walk in front of the TV when your husband is watching the game. That, my friends, is called an interruption. Now, brothers, don't you get too happy on that? Because, brothers, when your wife is watching a soap opera, come on in here, church. One thing you don't want to do is talk to her or walk across the television. Because what you just have caused is an interruption. So, I want you to know that as we discuss the life of Joseph... Uh, it's sequential, except for when you get up to Genesis 38, it just doesn't make sense. Genesis 37 deals directly with the life of Joseph, and Genesis 39 deals directly with the life of Joseph. But all of a sudden, Genesis 38 starts talking about Judah, and how Judah starts sleeping with a woman by the name of Tamar, who was posing as a prostitute. So what is Genesis 38? It is an interruption in the narrative that seemingly is about the life of Joseph but all of a sudden the writer comes in and starts talking about Judah so today's sermon is entitled you got it on this morning because Genesis 38 is about Judah and how this bizarre series of events starts to happen with Judah, one of Jacob's 12 sons. Although the writer is in the midst of talking about the life of Joseph, we have the interruption in chapter uh, number 38. Now, I want you to know the, the problem in this narrative. Somebody say the problem. The problem in the Genesis 38 narrative shows us the dysfunctionality in the Hebrew family. It shows us how some bizarre acts happen based on the decisions that the Hebrew family made. Let me be clear. It's sexual. It's evil. It's cunning. It's conniving. But let's be real. It's real. Somebody say it's real. Now, here's what I want you to understand. The seed came from Judah. But Judah slept with a woman who was his daughter-in-law and did not know it. She was posing as a prostitute because Judah messed up and did not give his third son to his daughter-in-law. So what she did was she dressed up like she was a 
prostitute, or the, the Bible would call it a harlot, so she got him to sleep with her so she could conceive, so she can carry on her deceased husband's bloodline. I'm going to explain all that to you in just a moment. Let me help you understand something. Take a deep breath. That's dysfunctional. Amen, somebody. That's bizarre. Am I right about it? And we're going to talk about that because I want you to know that regardless of the family dysfunctionality that you come from, amen, amen. God could still use you despite about how you got here. Amen, somebody. Despite what your parents did, despite what your grandparents did, despite what mama and daddy had to go through to get you here, you, God, can still use you. And I need to help somebody understand it on this morning. Now, that's what I want you to understand about the Bible. Uh, the Bible, you need to start reading the Bible. Let that real housewife stuff go, sisters. Amen. Hey, y'all ain't saying nothing this morning. If you really want to see some drama, church, amen, somebody. Man, just read the Bible. Go home and read Genesis 38. You're going to get all the drama you want. You ain't going to want to, you can cut off your cable after that point. Amen, somebody. You can save some money. Just read the Bible. Now, let me explain how... This narrative to you. Now follow me, Brother Walla. Let me explain this to you. So, Jacob is the father of 12 sons. Say 12 sons. And one of the 12 sons is by the name of Judah. Say Judah. Now, in this narrative, the brothers got mad at Joseph because Joseph was the dreamer. And Joseph uh, uh, had all these dreams about how his family was going to bow down to him and his brothers did not like that at all. So they plotted to kill him. So what they did was Judah came up with the fact, he said, well, let's just sell Joseph because it profits us nothing if we just kill him. We can't, in other words, we can't get no money out of that. So let's just, let's just put him in the pit. So they end up putting him in the pit and selling him into slavery. Then all of a sudden there's an inter eruption in Genesis chapter 38. So Judah leaves, he goes up to uh, a place called Adullam, and he is there uh, to visit his friend Hira. So while he is uh, uh, in Adullam visiting his friend Hira, he ends up seeing a woman whose father was named Shua, says Shua. Now, this woman was a Canaanite woman, which God had already said you should not fool with those heathen people. So he ended up sleeping with her and had married her and had three kids by this woman. Y'all still follow me this morning. Now, what was the three, ki three kids? The first one was named Ur. The second was named Onan. And the last one was named Shelah. Now, the problem with his kids was the first one God had to take his life. Because Ur was evil. Somebody shout evil. All right, so that's one down. Ur got to go because he's just evil. All right, so uh, in the Hebrew family, if a man dies and does not have a child, then that man's brother would have to take his wife uh, and be married to her so that that man who had, was deceased, his, his bloodline, his name could continue. Are y'all still following that? So the next son that was in line was Onan. So Onan was supposed to go into his deceased brother's wife named Tamar and have a child, but that child would not be Onan's. It would actually be Ur's. Are y'all still with me out there? So instead of going into her and to give his brother a child, he wasted his seed. All right. So he says, let me get this sexual pleasure, but I ain't trying to do nothing to give my brother no child. I want to get, I want to, I want to profit from this process, but I'm not really trying to help my brother out. God says, okay, got it. You gone too. So God kills him. So Judah, the father says, well, you know what? I done already lost two boys. Uh, I don't know if I just want to risk having my third son, Shelah, die. So what Judah does is he says, why don't he says, Tamar, I know you, you, you want to keep your husband's original bloodline going. He said, just go home and I want you to stay with your father. And when Shelah grows up, because he's just too young right now, when he grows up, then I'm going to come back and let him be your husband. But guess what? Judah didn't do that. Judah did not do that. So what happened was Judah's wife died. Isn't that interesting? Because he didn't do what he was supposed to do. And as a matter of fact, Moses would come back and write to us in Deuteronomy 25, verse 5 through 9 to help us understand. He made that a law that you had to do that. The, the brother had to take on the deceased brother's wife so that his brother could have the deceased brother could have a child. So Judah's wife dies. And when Judah's wife dies, 
uh, after the time of mourning was over, Judah went to this place called Timnah. Say Timnah. When he was on this place to Timnah to, to, to shear his sheep, he took his friend with him, and when they went there on the road to Timnah, he sees a woman who was in this place called Enam. And this woman is at the gateway of this place called Enam, and when he sees her, he doesn't know that his, it's his daughter-in-law, Tamar. Because what Tamar did was she found out that Judah was going to Timnah, she got to Enam, and she took she took off her widow's clothes, that's all right. She took off her widow's clothes, and then what she did was she put on uh, a, a veil, which would suggest that in that culture, then that's what prostitutes used to wear. Now, sisters, this is free. Be careful what you put on. Remember, she took off her widow's clothes, and she put on what prostitutes wear. Now, why did she do that? Because she knew that that would attract somebody to, to notice her as a prostitute. And what did Judah do? Judah saw her and said, watch this. He didn't say, um, so what you doing Friday? He didn't say, you want to go to Starbucks? You know what Judah said? Let me come into you. Y'all ain't feeling me on this morning. This right in the Bible. Because of what she had on suggested how he needed to treat her. So sisters, you better <sighs> be careful what you put on. Because what you put on suggests what you're trying to attract. Uh-huh, y'all ain't saying nothing on this morning. So Judah says, let me come into you. She said, what you gonna give me? He said, I send you a young goat. He said, I, she said, I need a pledge. In other words, put some in my hand to show me that you'll come back and give me something like you said you would. So he says, I'll give you my cord. She said, she said give me your signet ring. Uh, give me your uh, cord and give me your staff. So he did it. And then he went into her and then she conceived the child. In other words, Tamar tricked him. So now the father is sleeping with his daughter-in-law. I told you it's enough drum in the Bible where you don't have to watch TV. Y'all ain't hearing me this morning. So now she is pregnant. And then it's three months later. Judah hears the fact that your daughter-in-law, Tamar, has uh, been caught in harlotry. She has committed harlotry and now she's pregnant with child. Judah says she got to burn. Mm -hmm. uh, Judah says you got to burn her. You can't do that. And then when she finds it out, when he summoned her to come and then she let him know that I am pregnant by the man that owns these things, the pledge that she asked for him. And then he looked at her and said, you know what? You more righteous than me. Because at least you're trying to do what you're supposed to do, even though you tricked me to do it. But I should have been gave you my third son. Amen, somebody. So she ends up conceiving two twins, Fares and Zira. Now, here's what I want you to understand. Fares and Zira were the two twins. But God chose Fares to carry the seed of God's promise to Abraham. Stay with me, church. So, fairies and Zira were conceived through a bizarre, crazy situation because his daddy is his granddaddy. Y'all not helping me this morning. And I need somebody, I need somebody to understand Genesis 38 because some of us have been tricked by the devil. We think because we didn't come from prominence. Mama ain't have nothing. Daddy ain't have nothing. I come from this raggedy house, this raggedy family. Nobody has went to school. That doesn't mean nothing in God's grand scheme of redemption in your life. Because God can still use you despite coming from a dysfunctional family. Amen, somebody. I think God can still use you despite the fact that you come from a dysfunctional background. I know some folks that don't even know who their daddy is. I know some people that don't even know who their uh, they mama is. And I know some people who were adopted who have no clue who their earthly parents are. I know some people who are ashamed because of what their mama did. I know people who are ashamed because of what their daddy did. Here's what I want to tell you today. You can't worry about that. God still has.
has a plan for your life regardless of how you got here it's not about how you got here it's about what you do while you are here amen somebody so you can't let the crazy dysfunctional family dynamic cause you to allow the enemy to not have you perform the way god wants you to perform in this life because some people are just messed up because of their family dynamic and because of your family dynamic you have now allowed your thinking to change that to, to, to think that you are not who you could be amen somebody so what i want to help you understand this morning is that uh you are somebody now let me break it down for you god has given us some promises somebody say promises now let me tell you the promise that god gives because i'm gonna break this down for you we're talk about god's providence now all i'm gonna do today is basically give you some life principles that you need to know is that all right i usually just have two points but i want to do it a little bit different today i want to give you some life principles say life principles because we're talking about life principles for the life of joseph but i want to give you some principles on god's providence and on your life now here's 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 the promise somebody say promise now god gives promises amen somebody now what now watch the flow of this thing in genesis chapter 12 verse number three god told abraham i will bless those that bless you and i will curse those who curse you i'm going to make your name great and i, I want you to know abraham that in your seed all of the families of the earth shall be blessed now what did god do in genesis 12 3 he gave abraham a come on in here sister jones you in the house with me this morning praise the mighty name of jesus he gave him a promise and let me tell you something if god gives you a promise you don't have to worry about it you don't have to think about it it is going to happen regardless of your family dynamic god is not going to let no dusty eyed man no dusty eyed little boy no dusty eyed girl no dusty eyed woman stop him from coming good on his promises so God said, you know, Abraham in your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. All the families of the earth shall be blessed. And then Abraham had a son by the name of Isaac. Amen, somebody. And in Genesis chapter 26 and verse 4, Sister Lee, God told Abraham's son Isaac, in thy seed, all of the nations of the earth shall be blessed. What are you doing, God? I'm coming through on my promise. I'm going to tell Abraham I'm coming through. I'm going to tell Abraham's son Isaac I'm coming through with my promise. And then Isaac had a son by the name of Jacob. Somebody shout Jacob. And then in Genesis chapter 28 and verse number 14, he says, Jacob, in your seed, all of the families of the earth shall be blessed that's what we call the seed promise say seed promise stay with me church now it's impossible for god to lie amen somebody so we lie men lie women lie but but god cannot lie amen somebody so i want to help you understand that when he gave that promise to jacob then god said in your seed all the families of the earth shall be blessed which leads us to the fact that jacob had 12 sons say 12 sons one of them obviously was called joseph which we've been studying about but another one was called judah somebody shout judah now if god gives a promise it doesn't matter how crazy people act god still is going to allow his promise to come to a fruition all you have to do is make sure you are a part of the process and you are a part of God's family because God said in your seed, all the families, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed, which means that the seed is coming. Somebody shout the seed is coming. Somebody shout the seed is coming. The seed was going to come. Now watch this. God has this thing called providence. Say providence. Now what's providence, Brother Jones? Providence is regardless of how bad stuff look but i feel like running around right now brother garner regardless of how bad situations seem to be god could still provide even in the midst of negative situations that's called his providence so uh god said i gave you a promise 
And since the seed has to come through Jacob's family line, I'm going to foreshadow for you that even though my people sometimes act crazy, amen, somebody, I'm still going to bless my promise to come to a fruition by a man by the name of Judah. Somebody shout Judah. So the seed of Jacob did not come through Joseph. The seed of Jacob came through Judah. Well, Brother Jones, why in the world would God allow the dysfunctional Judah to have the seed come through him? Because it doesn't matter how crazy and dysfunctional, come on here somebody, your family is, God could still use you despite your family dysfunctionality. And somebody in here knows somebody in your family that's dysfunctional. Somebody in here, mama. It may not be yours, but somebody. Somebody hit mama crazy. Somebody hit daddy may be crazy. Somebody go to a family you and got a crazy aunt, a crazy uncle, a crazy cousin. Y'all ain't helping me in here this morning. So I don't want you to think just because your family dynamic is dysfunctional that God's promises still can't come through you. Because what God is looking for is somebody that understands that God has some promises for his people. And all you have to do is remain a part of God's plan. And if you remain a part of God's plan, God could use his providence to allow his promises to come through. Amen, somebody. Because you want to be a part of this seed. You want to be a part of this seed. Because 430 years later... After God gave Abraham the seed promise, the law came into effect. And then he gave the law, but the law was just a schoolmaster. It was just a foreshadow of what was going to come through Jesus. So all the law did was just teach us that we could not keep the whole law perfect. But when Jesus came, grace and mercy came. Amen, somebody. Grace and truth came through Jesus. So I want you to understand that if God is giving you life right now, it doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter what your parents did to get you here. God still wants to use you. Because some people say, well, man, you know, you know, I came from a one night stand. Man, you better be shouting. <laughs> Y'all, I said, you better be shouting that you came from a one night stand. Because had that not happened, you wouldn't be here. So don't let the enemy, Diablos, the devil, Satan, the accuser, get you caught up with thinking because of how you got here, you ain't going to amount to nothing. Because the seed that God promised came through a man that was having uh, relations with a prostitute, he thought. Y'all better come get me this morning. I'm trying to help somebody out. Because somebody got somebody in their family that's dysfunctional. Am I right about it? And let me tell you, the, in, the enemy wants you to think that because of how you got here, the way you got here, that something is wrong with your life. And God put Genesis 38 as an erupt, uh, interruption in the Joseph narrative to help us understand it doesn't matter what man does. If I give you a promise and you become a part of my plan, I'm going to use my providence to help you get there. Amen, somebody. So I want somebody to know that you are somebody. Okay, y'all don't sound like you believe that. Anybody in here, church? I said, anybody, anybody believe that you are somebody? And let me tell you, we spend so much time wasting our lives. Am I right about it? Some of us are waiting to die. Hmm? Instead of living our lives. So God allowed the seed that he promised Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to come through the dysfunctionality of Judah and Tamar. And then God had uh, those two twins, Pharisees and Zerah. But Pharisees was carrying the seed. So Pharisees had a son by the name of Ezron. Ezron had a son by the name of Ram. Ram had a son by the name of Aminadad. Aminadad had a son by the name of Naashon. Naashon had a son by the name of Salmon. Salmon had a son by the name of Boaz. Boaz had a son by the name of Obed. Obed had a son by the name of Jesse. And from Jesse came King David. And from King David came forth, watch this, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ came from the line of Abraham and Judah. 
which means that Jesus Christ himself came from a dysfunctional y'all ain't helping me in here this morning a dysfunctional family dynamic and if jesus christ can come from a dysfunctional family dynamic you and i even though we come from that dynamic we can still do something great in the world too amen somebody don't allow your interruption to interrupt god's plan for your life See, your interruption could be the dynamic that you came from. So the devil got your mind twisted. You need to understand Genesis 38. Because in Genesis 38, we understand that although there was an er interruption in the life of Joseph, that's there for a reason. Because he wants to help us understand that man cannot foil my promises. Man cannot foil my plan. Man so God could still allow his promises providentially to happen. So that means is, what's your excuse? Can I tell you on this morning, church, um, why God has us here, we need to be living our lives. We need to be living our lives in such a way that every day when I wake up, I wake up having my purpose. Every day when you wake up, you need to know that you have a purpose in this world. When God gives you life, live it. We say, Brother Jones, well, I got this going on and I got that going on while you have this going on and while you have this health dilemma, health challenge or whatever issue you got, make sure you live your life and have purpose every day. I get so sick and tired of seeing talented men and women try to uh, play that whole card with, uh, you know, uh, this just the hand that I was dealt. You need to, what do they call those people that, uh, they're dealers, right? They deal the cards out. Deal yourself another hand. Amen, somebody. So just because you was given this hand, you are the dealer. You deal yourself another we hand. We at the Grace Free Church of Christ want to thank you for listening. If the Passion for Christ television broadcast has blessed your life this morning and you would like to donate, you can go online to www.graceviewcoc.com. Click on the donate tab and you can make your tax deductible donation to this broadcast. God bless you and tune in next week. Troubles come, just hold the and change in hand. You might have brought some trials. You might have brought some tribulations here this morning. You might be feeling a little weary, but I came to tell you, Jesus, you can see the Lord in prayer. Then we can truly, we can truly.